W.O.R. Mutual is proud to present the distinguished American actor, Walter Hamden, in The Adventures of Leonidas Witherall. Leonidas Witherall's always getting mixed up in murder. <laughs> you wouldn't think so to look at him. He looks exactly like Shakespeare. It's his beard, and he's proprietor of an important school for boys in New England. And he writes thriller stories, too, the Lieutenant Hazeltine stories. And the incidents by which Leonidas manages to get mixed up in crime are strange and unexpected, aren't they, Mr. Hampton? Well, they certainly are. Uh, for instance, at this moment, it's the very pleasant twilight hour in Dalton, and Witherall is at home in his study, reading. Down in the hall, uh, the, the living room, Mrs. Mullet, his good friend and the general housekeeper for the neighborhood, is hard at work when... I'll answer it, Mr. Witherall. All right, Mrs. Mullet. Were you expecting any visitors? No, not that I know of. <coughs> Mrs. Mullet, what's happened? Where are you? Mrs. Mullet! Mrs. Mullet! Operator, I want police headquarters. Hurry. Hurry. <laughs> Mrs. Mullet went to answer the door, Sergeant, and I was sitting in the study. I couldn't see into the foyer. Suddenly, I heard her scream, and when I ran out to look for her, she, she'd vanished. Not a sign of her, eh, Bill? No. And from the way she screamed, I'd say something horrible had happened to her. She didn't have any enemies, did she? Oh, she was the friendliest, most harmless woman. Well, she worked for some of the best families in Dalton. Mm. I, that's why I can't understand this. Well, I've put her on the missing persons list. I've done all the routine things. I can't do anything else. But don't you see, she didn't just get up and walk off somewhere. She's been kidnapped. But uh, you say you didn't see anyone. No cars, huh? no strangers, no evidence of any huh? kind. I'd send out every squad car I'd got, but where will I go? Oh, you're quite right. I, I guess I'm not making much sense. All we can do is wait. Yep, that's it. All we can do is wait. <laughs> Miss Fidget? Yes? Uh, this is Leonidas Witherall. Oh, sure, Bill Shakespeare. How's the beard? Uh, is Mrs. Mullet at your house? We well, no. Why? Uh, she disappeared a few hours ago. I've been calling various people in Dalton, hoping they might have seen her. Well, no, I haven't seen her. Oh. Sergeant McCubble? Yes, Bill? No word yet? No word yet, Bill. Oh, uh, I'm going to bed, Sergeant. I'm exhausted. But call me the second she turns up, no matter what time it is. You bet, Bill. Yes? Good morning. Uh, this is Leonidas. Oh, hello, Mr. Witherell. No, she's not home yet. I see. All right. Thank you. Coming. One second. Mrs. Mullet. Thank heavens. Are you all right? Well, I... I can still stand up. What's happened to you? I've been frantic. Why, well, it's five o'clock in the afternoon. You've been gone almost 24 hours. Mr. Witherall, I was kidnapped. Oh, I thought so. Oh, here, sit down. Would you like some water? You look peaked. Oh, my face is dirty, isn't it? And my hat is not on straight. Uh, yes, yes, but, but go on. Now, tell me the story. Well... Remember when I went to answer the door? Yes. Well, I opened the door and I didn't see anyone. So I stuck my head out and presto, someone took hold of my arms and, and put a blindfold over my eyes. Did you recognize anyone? No, it was dark, you know, and it all happened so fast. I'd know their voices, though. Where did they take you? Well, I don't know exactly. They made me walk down the street and we got into a car... Then we went for a ride. Not long, about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I'd say. What did they uh, talk about in the car? Nothing. Not till we got there. To where? Some house. I think they took me into the cellar, because from the street we walked down, not upstairs. Mm. Now then what happened? They took the keys. I've got the keys to everybody's house I take care of. Why, I'd more than a dozen of them. 
Well, they never took the blindfold off. They just took the keys. Then they started to talk about Mr. Twink. Mr. Twink? Yes. Yes, I take care of his house. It's on Blackstone Road. Oh. Mr. Twink's on vacation. He went to Canada last week, and he left the key to his place with me. Yes, uh, evidently they wanted to get into Mr. Twink's home. Uh, you know why? Well, sure I do. He not only left the key to his front door, he left the key to his safe. Besides, he told me the combination of the little door inside. Why did he do that? Well, Mr. Twink has a lot of confidence in me. Oh, uh, justifiably, yes. You see, he has a lot of silverware in the safe, and he wanted me to clean them. Then there's some bonds. I, uh, had a bit of business to tend to for him. Of course, your executive ability would help there. Yes, I, uh... Had to clip some coupons for him. Mm, it's obvious those men were after all those valuables in the safe. Oh, they were after the safe, all right. After they had the keys, they asked me to tell them Mr. Twink's combination. But I wouldn't. They tried just about everything they could think of. But they didn't hurt you, I hope. Well, they were going to. First, they offered me some money. Which you spurned. I wouldn't touch it. No. Then they argued with me and argued... But you were firm. Like a rock. Excellent. Then they went away somewhere, but they came back a few hours later. Fact is, they went away several times. And every time they came back, they asked me about that combination again. Did they treat you very roughly? Well, not like in one of those Hazeltine stories you write. But they wouldn't give me anything to eat. And when I got sleepy, they kept waking me up. And they were all set to really hurt me. But I got out. You escaped? Ingenious. Mm-hmm. That part was just like in one of your stories. I was tied to the chair, you see. And after a while, it got very quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'd gone off somewhere. So I did what Hazeltine always does. I wiggled, squirmed, and finally, I got one hand loose. Mm-hmm. Then I untied the other knots and got the blindfold off. And what did you see? Nothing. It was pitch black. So I just sneaked up to where I saw some lights coming through a door. And when I got to it, I just ran for all I was worth. I didn't look back for a second. I just ran and ran. Did you come out of the cellar? Yes. Well, did you notice where you were? Well, I was so tired and dizzy. I I just ran around for a while without knowing where I was. I was too frightened to think. And then... I fell down. Oh, my. Oh, I must have stayed there by the side of the road for a long, long time. When I came to, it was light. So I hurried over here. The road where I fell down was near the highway. Highway G8, going toward Carnarvon? Well, I think so. I've never been out that way before. Mm, G8 toward Carnarvon. Yes, that's it. That's where we'll start. Start? Well, aren't we going back there to capture that gang, just like Hazeltine would? We're well, certainly not. You and I alone? Hazeltine captures a gang alone. Well, Mrs. Mullet, the lieutenant is a fictional character, a product of my imagination. But, Mr. Witherall... Uh, practically speaking, the possibility of you and me capturing that um, uh, gang, as you put it, is absurd. Besides, if they're really an organized gang, the chances are very good we'd never live through such an escapade. Well, if you think I'm going to let those rascals go scot-free after kidnapping me, you're all wrong, Mr. Witherall. I'm going to teach them a lesson if I have to do it myself. Mrs. Mullet, your intentions, however firm, wouldn't be very convincing in the face of a machine gun. Well, machine gun or not, I'm going to find out who grabbed me. You come along. You're very smart about these things. Mm, I don't think it'd be a battle of wits. It might be confined to gunplay. Well, you can stay if you want to. Of course, Hazeltine never just sit there. Uh, Mrs. Mullet, why not let the police handle it? I'll call Sergeant McCobble. Yes. Uh, this is definitely a problem for the sergeant. Police headquarters, Sergeant McCobble. Uh, this is the honest Witherall, Sergeant. Uh, Mrs. Mullet's just come back. Swell, Bill. I'm glad to hear it. Say, uh, where was she? She was kidnapped. She was? Well, who did it? Uh, we don't know. Of course, she has some clues. Yeah. Well, everything definite? Well, not too definite, no. Oh. Well, look, Bill. I was just leaving. There's been a big robbery. Now, you keep Mrs. Mullet at your place, and I'll drop by as soon as I finish this job. How was that? Oh, but, Sergeant... Sorry, Bill. Can't spare time to talk about it now. See you later. But I Bye. thought... Uh, hello. Hello. Oh, he hung up. Well, the police coming? Not just yet. Uh, soon. Soon? 
You think I'm going to sit here and give those crooks a chance to get away? I'm going right now. No, wait. You can't go after those men alone. Well, you can come or not, but here I go. All right, all right. My car's outside. I'll go along. Uh, at least I may be able to keep you from getting yourself killed. Come along. I imagine the only way to locate this house is for you to recall every sound you heard, every small detail you can remember about that automobile ride. Well, now, let's see. First thing was the bakery. Bakery? Yes, we've been riding along about a minute when I smell the bakery. Can't mistake it, you know. Hmm. Get right in. Uh, that's it. Your acquaintance with the shops in town should help. Uh, whose bakery is about a minute's drive? Well, let me think. Oh, Dougal's. The only one that's anyway near your house. Then we'll head for Dougal's. Uh, what did you notice after that? Well, there was the bakery, then the tracks. I felt the car going over tracks. Mm -hmm, railroad tracks. We'll drive to Dougal's and then see which way we have to go to cross the tracks. Fine. Now we're accomplishing something. We'll catch those crooks, Mr. Witherall. Step on it. There's the bakery. And the tracks are off the left, up this street. So we'll turn left... There are the tracks right up ahead there. Yes. Look. Look at that car coming toward us. The big black one? Seems the driver's crazy. The way he's swerving from side to side. Maybe it's those gangsters. They need to want to kill us. <laughs> Let go the wheel. Let go the wheel. <sighs> Phew. <sighs> you all right, Mrs. Mullet? They came within two inches of turning us over. Yes, I... I was so scared there for a minute... Do you think it was the gangsters? It's very possible. They may have followed you. They may know we're heading for their um, hangout. I'm not turning back, either. You're not? That car wasn't a sufficiently dramatic example of what may happen. We're going right straight ahead. Hmm. Now, let me think. After the track, there was the water. I heard water. Uh, much water? A uh, uh, brook? No. No, it was louder than that. Sort of a... Sort of a waterfall. Hmm. Uh, how much time elapsed between the tracks and the water? Well, I don't know. I'd say uh, another few minutes. Well, there's a crossroads up ahead. I wonder which road leads to a waterfall. I don't know of any waterfall in this section. I'll try going right. Sure you heard that? Positive. Uh, uh, could you go any faster? Mrs. Mullet, if I'm going to get into a wild gun battle, I, I'd like to appreciate the beauties of the countryside before I expire. But they'll get away, Mr. Witherall. They'll be gone before we get there. Well, I admit I find myself harboring a wish that uh, that will prove to be true. I can't remember looking forward to an appointment with less anticipation. Oh, go on, Mr. Witherall. We'll nab them just like in the Hazel Time stories. Hazel Time to the rescue! Oh, shades of Shakespeare. <laughs> Oh, you were lucky turning to the right. Lucky? Well, sure. There's the little waterfall. Yes. After the water, we went to the house. Oh, oh while I was in the cellar, I heard waxing machines. Uh -huh. Oh, I'd know that sound anywhere. They were doing the floors above us. Lots of hustle bustle going on. Well, at least after I get shot, I have a beautifully waxed floor to collapse on. Mm -hmm. I wonder where that house is. Well, it must be the one up ahead. There aren't any others around. Well, it couldn't be that house, though. I'm sure it belongs to Mr. Beagle. I heard he'd taken a house out here, a big estate. Mr. Beagle? Why, well, I know him. He couldn't have done it. No, he's one of the most active citizens in Dalton. Charitable, public-spirited. I know, but I'd still say that's the house that took me to. Mm, it's not possible. Well, drive a bit closer anyway. All right. In fact, we can stop here if you wish. Exquisite home, isn't there? Well, exquisite or not, that's the place. The gang's in there. Now we'll rush over and grab them. Hmm, the architect will what? Grab them! Oh, don't be so enthusiastic. It's unhealthy. Uh, let's walk over. Why, well, say, look at the lights. 
There's a party going on in there. There certainly is. A party. Strange. If this is the house... Well, there's not another one around. We followed the sounds in order. But why would a party be going on? You know, Mrs. Mullet, this is beginning to intrigue me. You heard them waxing floors. Now there's a party. That makes sense. Of course. I'm going in. Uh, suppose you walk down the road to the nearest gasoline station and call Sergeant Macabo. Uh, tell him to come over, uh, just in case you're right. But it's Mr. Beagle's house. You just gone storming into the party? Uh, not storming, gently breezing in. But didn't you say if the gangsters are there, you'd be shot? I want to know who kidnapped you, Mrs. Mullet. I also want to know why a party should be going on in this house. If this is where you were, yes, I I'm going to take the chance. And if I get shot... Well, if the gentleman I'm supposed to resemble has written, there's a destiny that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will. Now you're talking like hazel time. Ah, thank you, Mrs. Mullet. Now, let's see. Uh, Mr. Beagle came to Dalton about a year ago. Wealthy, intelligent, well-liked. It's very puzzling. Be careful. Oh, I shall. And you be quick. I may need the sergeant badly. All right. Bye, Mr. Witherall. Good luck. Bye. Yes? Mr. Beagle? That's me. I'm Leonidas Witherall. Oh, yes. The man who looks like Shakespeare. Well, I hope I'm on time for all the festivities. Hmm? What? What'd you say? I said I hope I'm not late. Oh, no, you're not late, no, but, uh, well... well uh... Cornelia Witherbloom. <laughs> uh, hello. And, uh, Susan Dorm. Yes. Witherall, look at that. I didn't know he had so many mutual friends, Mr. Beagle. Oh, didn't you? Makes it very cozy, doesn't it? Yes, very. Right. Mm. Did you want something? You seem to be looking around. Mm, thank you. I was just admiring the decor. Mm, splendid. Uh, I'd like to see the upstairs section, too, sometime. You're the curious type, aren't you? Oh, no, I'm merely interested in decoration, furniture. Weatherall, I didn't invite you. You didn't? Well, someone did telephone me. Yeah. Nobody telephoned you. Oh, uh, well, perhaps it was a card. Yes, Mrs. Mullet, my housekeeper, brought the card to me with the morning mail. Uh, you know Mrs. Mullet? Yes, I do. Well, she works for quite a lot of people in town. Works for me and Mr. Twink. Oh, uh, do you know Mr. Twink? Did you say you wanted to see the rest of the house? Oh, I don't want to disturb you now with this party going on. Well, I'll have my friends show you the place. You can start downstairs, in the cellar. In the cellar? Yes. You'll be very interested in what I have in the cellar. Louie, Jackie. What's the matter, boss? What do you want? I want you to show the house to Mr. Weatherall. Take him down in the cellar first. I got you. Come on, pal. We're going on a sightseeing tour. Well, uh, thank you, but uh, perhaps uh, later. Eh? Oh, why don't you play something hot? Let's dance. Oh, yes, uh, you fellas show with her all the cellar now. Uh, come on, Maestro. Play something hot, will you? And make it good and loud, huh, boys? Sure. That's a great idea. Okay, let's go with her all. With her all, I said let's go downstairs. Oh, yes, uh, uh, but later. Oh, Cornelia. Yes, Leonidas. Uh, Cornelia, may I have this dance? Oh, why, certainly, but it's hot swing. I've never seen you a jitterbug, Leonidas. I never have, but I'm going to do it now. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, uh, come on, Cornelia. It's the boys at Merida say. Uh, what is that phrase? Um, uh, manufacture a rug? Oh, yes, uh, let's cut a rug. Leonidas! Oh, Leonidas, where in the world are you dancing to? What, we're going off the floor. It's rather crowded here. I thought uh, there'd be more room by that window. It leads to the terrace, I think. Well, all right. Say, you're doing very well. I, I never thought Shakespeare could dance this way. Oh, yes. If we can, uh, just uh, dance uh, toward that French window. I can get out by the terrace. Get out? What, what are you talking now, may about? May I cut in, Mrs. Winterblom? Oh, why, yes, of course. Uh, do you mind, the honor? Oh, I was enjoying this, so I hate to leave you. Come with me, with her uh, Let's go, Mrs. Winterblom. Oh, bye, Leonidas. I'm waiting. Yes, Louis. I'm sorry to keep you. You know, I've suddenly lost all interest in going into the cellar. Get going there anyway. And don't try anything, Toots. Uh, Toots, uh, you embarrass me. Don't go tossing off a couple of hints about what's cooking here. 
What's in my pocket ain't no water pistol. Cooking a pistol? The order is with her all. My goodness, you rascal. Why didn't you come over and speak to me? Well, I've been uh, busy, too. Oh, what? I mean, uh, Susan. <laughs> well, just you come over here to this sofa and sit down and chat with me. Will you pardon us? Huh? Uh, pardon us. Come on, Leonidas. Oh, I'm delighted, Mrs. Drip. Uh, uh, drop uh, the trap. Well, how have you been? I haven't seen you in weeks. Mixed up in any murders lately? I'm mixed up in one right now. Hopelessly mixed oh, up. Oh, really? A uh, young man, uh, Louis. Yeah? Would you do me a favor and get me some more punch, please? Me? Okay. Yes. Give me the glass, Duchess. Give me, Duchess? <laughs> yes. Curious guess, isn't uh-huh. it? Now, Leonidas, tell me all about it. Who's been killed? Uh, no one yet. No? Uh, but they will be at any moment. Well, why don't you stop it? No, I'm afraid I can't. <laughs> oh, Leonidas, you wouldn't be pulling my leg, would you? Oh, no. On the contrary, I'm <laughs> talking shoulder to shoulder. Oh, Mm, legs, shoulders. If this keeps up, we'll uh, need some ration points. Oh, how droll of you. Well, who's going to be killed? I am. Oh, oh now I know you're just teasing me. No, Susan, I- I'm going to be shot uh, within a few seconds. <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you, Leonidas. You've such an extraordinary sense of humor. Huh? <laughs> yes. Well, who's going to shoot you? Cornelia? Me? Uh, one of Mr. Beagle's friends. Oh, Susie, Mm -hmm. I've got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Would you walk toward the front door with me? Of course. I adore these games. We played murder at a party last week, but we didn't act it out this way. It was a quiz game called Stump It or Lump It. Yes, uh, the... You know, the the quiz I'm in now might be called Answer It or Drop Dead. Really? (laughs) Is Louie in it? Yes, very much so. Oh, you know Beagle does get the most exciting ideas for his parties. Well, come on. Sneak toward the front door, eh? Uh, yes, uh, do it very casually, though. Come on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Walk slowly. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. They haven't seen me. <laughs> You'll sneak out, and then we'll all look for you. Is that it? I- I'm going to back up against this door and grab the knob. Mm-hmm. Smile, Susan. Smile at everyone. I am. Oh, I am. <laughs> Isn't this more fun? <laughs> I- I- I've got the, the knob in my hand. Uh-huh. Now I'll, I'll, I'll turn yeah. it. Easy, easy. Mm-hmm. Talk. Yes? Uh, talk about something, or anything at all. Oh, I see. <laughs> to distract them. Huh? Well, you know, I saw the most darling hat yesterday, Leonidas. I was in New York. Uh, the knob's turn. I just couldn't resist it. It was... I'm all set now. You know, it was one of those little stores on Maybe. Broadway. Oh, going uh, somewhere with the wrong... Oh. Jackie, don't it. Don't leave now. The party's just getting warmed up. It's at a fever heat, if you ask me. Stick around. There's going to be plenty of fireworks. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> well, Leonidas, he saw you. So I guess the game's spoiled. Mm. Call me when you want to start a new one, will you? How about musical chairs? I just... Now, you fooled around enough with her all. Now you're going downstairs. You'll have to make me... I'm not going into the cellar. Come on, Jackie. Beagle's getting impatient. The door to the cellar's over there with her all. I'll not budge one step. Oh, you won't, huh? You want to play rough? Okay, bud. You asked for it. All right, turn the lights on, boys. Stay where you are. Oh, yeah. Don't try anything, either. Well, where's Bill Shakespeare? Anybody see Leonidas Witherall? Don't you see him, Sergeant? There were shots. I heard the shots. I heard the shots, Mrs. Muffin. But I don't see him anywhere, do you? Why, Leonidas was here just a minute ago. Oh, well, he might be upstairs. See this stairway? All right, come on. Goodness. He wasn't playing a game after all. We'll go upstairs and... Say, wait. Well, if it isn't Louie and Jackie. How are you, boys? You fellas haven't been in town bothering me for a long time. They're probably in this frisco. Okay. We didn't do nothing. Leave me alone. All right, shut up, you two, before I hands you your heads. What'd you do with Bill Shakespeare? He beat it when the lights went out. Who turned him out? I did. We were playing a little game. So what? Oh, a little game, eh? Carrying those guns? Hold them, boys. Let's go, Mrs. Mullet. We're going upstairs. Sergeant, they're in this, all right. I recognize their voices. Why, they're the two fellas that took me into the car. Uh, well, the boys will watch them until we get back. Then we'll have a nice, long talk. Come on up. Yes, Bill? Hey, Bill? Where are you? Oh, I didn't... You all right? I hope nothing's happened to him. Wait, I'll try this door. Nope, nothing doing. Well, I'll be down the hallway here. He might be down there. Oh, hurry, Sergeant. They may have shot him. Yeah, I don't see Beagle anywhere, either. I bet he's with Bill. Wait, I'll try this room. Ah, Sergeant McCullough oh, yes. and Mrs. Mullet. Won't you come in? You all right, Mr. Witherall? Oh, a bit winded, that's about all. Say, Bill, didn't you hear us calling? 
Why, only just now, you see, the door was closed, and uh, Mr. Beagle and I were having a very spirited and noisy conversation. Have your friends seen Louie and Jackie? We got them, Bill. But now tell me, what happened? Why, there's Mr. Twink's silverware. Yes, the entire contents of Mr. Twink's safe is there on Mr. Beagle's bed, I believe. Well. Uh, do you care to explain, Mr. Beagle? I'm not saying a word. I'm explaining nothing. I don't have to talk here. I put out the light, Sergeant, uh, when Louie and Jackie were about to exterminate me. Mm -hmm. In the dark, I ducked and ran upstairs. I was sure Mr. Beagle would be planning to leave with his loot. Why, that's the stuff I've been looking for all day. This is the robbery I was working on before. Really? Yes. Uh, Mr. Beagle wasn't quite the outstanding citizen, we thought. Uh, after he took the keys from Mrs. Mullet, he gave them to Louie and Jackie. They robbed the safe... While Mr. Beagle was purposely giving a party for some of the best-known people in Dalton. As a perfect excuse for his whereabouts during the robbery. Then uh, Louie and Jackie came back to divide the loot. But, uh, unfortunately, I suddenly appeared as an uninvited guest. Oh, so they tried to get rid of you first, eh? I get it. Come on, Beagle, oh, come relax, on. relax, will you? Who do you think you're pushing around? Now, Mr. Beagle, if you'll be so good as to return Mrs. Mullet her keys. Well, Mr. Witherall, guess we did as well as Hazel Todd anyway, didn't we? Oh, we did uh, just as well, Mrs. Mullet. Say, what were you doing all the time I was fetching the sergeant? Dancing to hot swing. To hot swing? Yes, uh, that's uh, mood music for a nervous breakdown. <laughs> oh. Well, as Mr. Mullet used to say when he was alive... Give me a nice old-fashioned waltz every time. Yes, I agree. Now, let's go, Mrs. Mullet. Wait a minute, Bill. Where are you going? She's a witness. Oh, couldn't you spare the witness for just a few minutes, Sergeant? Spare her? What for? For a nice old-fashioned waltz. Shall we, Mrs. Mullet? Well, Mr. Witherall. <laughs> W.O.R. Mutual has presented the distinguished American actor Walter Hamden in The Adventures of Leonidas Witherall. Mrs. Mullet is played by Ethel Ramey. The character of Leonidas Witherall is from the mystery novels by Alice Tilton. The radio script is by Howard Merrill, and this program was produced by Joe Ripley. Next week's story involves an attempt by Leonidas to enjoy a vacation, uh, doesn't it, Mr. Hamden? It does, and a very peculiar vacation it is, too. Leonidas goes to the mountains for a few peaceful days of rest and relaxation. But he hasn't been resting more than about 60 seconds when he runs into a fire, a mysterious diamond, and, uh, of course, a murder. I hope you'll be with us next Sunday for a very exciting and fascinating story. Good night. <laughs> If you live in or near New York, or if you plan to visit New York soon, we invite you to attend a broadcast of Leonidas Witherall. Just write a postcard with your name and address and send it to Bill Shakespeare. That's what Leonidas' friends call him. Bill Shakespeare, care of WOR New York 18. We'll be glad to send tickets free of charge. Remember, to receive free tickets to a Leonidas Witherall program, send a note tonight to Bill Shakespeare, WOR New York 18. The Adventures of Leonidas Witherall is heard over most of these mutual stations every Sunday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Wartime and comes to you from the stage of the WOR Mutual Playhouse in New York. This is Mutual.